we are not cooking because we don't need to call the fire department today. Welcome to my kitchen. We are doing art with things we find in our kitchen and our pantry. Like River said, we're going to use coffee grounds. You know, we use beet juice. Yeah, River, you can use hot sauce too. Oil is also on the list of things we're going to try because it's going to make the paper pretty transparent. Let's see what we can make. Ready, River? Let's go. Okay, so I have some things we can use here. Some spinach, some coffee grounds, some oil, hot sauce, and beet juice. And I'm going to just take a little bit of each and do a sample on this piece of paper. I'm using thicker paper so that the liquid doesn't go through it, kind of watercolor paper. You can use whatever paper you have available. So the coffee grounds, the oil, the hot sauce, and the beet juice are going to be the easiest because they're already in like a liquid state. I'm just going to add some hot sauce here and put it on underneath my hot sauce label. And the spinach itself, it's not a liquid obviously but you break up the spinach a little bit and it's gonna leave that green color. So I put some water on my paintbrush. I'm gonna kind of squish it and I'm gonna use my paintbrush to push the spinach into the paper and it leaves a green color. So now that our samples are all dry, you have an idea of what the colors are gonna look like. I just took a paper towel and blotted them dry and cleaned them up a bit. Let's get ready to do smart. So we're going to start off using coffee grounds. I put some just plain water in this bowl and added a scoop of used coffee grounds and mixed it up. Now with coffee grounds, it's going to first show up as a lighter brown, but the, as you let it dry and then add another layer, you can get darker browns. Now for this first experiment into kitchen made paints, I'm going to do a free hand painting of an outdoor scene. We're going to start with the tree and I'm just going to build up the brown and just a very simple tree is what I'm going to start with. All right, now we're moving on to green. I used spinach and crushed it, add some water, and that's what gave me this green color I'm working with now. I'm going to apply it using the paintbrush, but then I'm also going to just be taking it and putting the actual crushed spinach onto the paper, and that will allow the pigment in the green spinach to be sucked into the paper and might have a few darker areas than just the paintbrush alone. I'm also going to apply this mixture to my background and my grass to add more color to the page. So I let that spinach mixture sit for a while to really get the paper to soak up the green and I added some oil as well if you notice there's some translucent parts of the paper that's where I added the oil for some more depth in the picture. Um, finally, I'm going to be adding some color with this red or pink color from the beet juice as well as some more dimension to my tree. I mentioned earlier when you add layers of the coffee ground color, it gets a darker brown. So we're going to do it more on the sides and in the center to get more of a tree texture in this painting. Okay, so let's let the tree dry for a little while and try a wax resist experiment using our experimental paints. I'm going to use a crayon and create a pattern using a white crayon first so that it'll anywhere I leave the crayon will hopefully be left white on the paper because water and crayon don't mix. Crayon is made of wax, obviously. I'm going to add that coffee mixture on top and then I'm going to be adding another layer of crayon and then I'll be adding another layer of the paints that we create. First coffee mixture and then some of the other colors we've created with beet juice and spinach. Between layers I'm making sure to take a paper towel as well and blotting the excess water off so that I'm mixing the colors as little as possible. Because they are natural and kind of experimental from the kitchen, they're not as bright and pigmented as paints you'll buy at an art store. So by making sure that whatever you put on last is blotted as much as possible off the paper, you're ensuring that the new color you're using, you're going to be able to see as much as you can. And if you notice, I'm not really coloring the page in with the color. By not really coloring it in, I'm not saturating the paper with water. And I'm hoping that way the color is a little bit more pronounced than it would be if there was a lot more water on the paper. So I'm going to finish this one off with a spinach and give it a bit of a color of the background and we'll see our final results. So our awesome experiment 
art we made. This one is the Wax Resist Flower, which I love how this one came out. It's by far my favorite. I just love the design and the colors just kind of pop with the layers. And this one I find really interesting because it kind of looks like it got caught in the rain. I love them both and the fact that we made them out of paints that we found of stuff in the kitchen is pretty remarkable. So take all of this awesome new knowledge, make some amazing art, and if you want more art lessons, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.